Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I'm the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thank you so very much for watching and downloading in more than 150 countries around the world and making the Exam Room one of the most consumed nutrition podcasts anywhere on the planet today. Here we are at the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine, and I am so honored to be joined by a dear friend of the show, one heck of a cardiologist. I mean, credentials for days, as I tell you every single time you are here. Dr. Kim Williams, thank you for making your return to the exam room. Thank you so much, Chuck. It's such a pleasure to be here again. You're talking about, in your presentation, the title is something to the effect of you're doing everything right and your cholesterol is still high. When a person thinks that they're doing everything right, how often is that actually the case? That's a, I wish I had data on it, but I can tell you that there isn't enough data out there fast enough for people to know exactly what's right. So I spent a lot of time today uh, talking about those little things that people are, they're particularly, I didn't, didn't mean to pick on our animal rights vegan because I know this is an animal rights vegan thing that started the whole PCRM thing. So loads of kudos and respect for that. Um, and, but the, and the planetary sustainability uh, folks, but it's more of the healthcare vegans that actually uh, do a lot of what this conference is about. What is the science behind, you know, uh, cholesterol and uh, the supplements that was the next talk. And you're going to hear all kinds of stuff that will really uh, inform folks the kind of information they don't have right now. So if I had to pick out the most common one, it would be uh, ultra processed vegan stuff. That's number one. And that it's ultra processed and leaving it's, it tastes so good <laughs> and it sets off your dopamine and it's got sugar and it's got refined grains and, um, and saturated fat. And so we have a lot of products, you know, the vegan beignets and the red velvet cupcakes and vegan ice cream that are really not healthy. And so uh, let's take a really careful look at the bottom line ingredients. It's on the back of the package, hopefully soon, if the FDA gets its way, on the front of packages. And just read up on how much saturated fat there is, how much sodium, how much, when, what is your sugar to fiber and your carbohydrate to fiber ratio. If we could just pay attention to those things, it's going to be a, we'll have a much better time managing cholesterol. Yeah, well, let's let's unpack that a little bit, because mm -hmm. if a product is indeed vegan, there should not be any cholesterol That's by correct. definition in there. And yep. yet still, these foods affect the cholesterol. How does that work? Two ways. So one is saturated fat is a great example because it makes you make more cholesterol out of your liver. Mm. And so it ends up in your bloodstream just as if you had eaten it. The, and, but then the other side is the microbiome. So I spent a little time talking in that uh, uh, lecture about the microbiome, the fact that there, that you know, fifty percent of our DNA is actually not human in our body. It's all those little microorganisms, and you know, some viruses, some fungus here and there, but it's mostly bacteria. And we may not like the bacteria between our toes, but that's not changing your cholesterol. The bacteria, <laughs> the bacteria in your GI tract is controlling almost everything, your immune response, your, how you absorb drugs, how you absorb food, whether or not you have a leaky gut that makes you ill. And so you have to protect it. How do you protect it? A whole food, plant-based, high-fiber diet. And when you're eating vegan, I didn't want to use the pejorative term junk food, but I think everyone knows what I mean. Uh, you're eating things that encourage an, a dysbiotic, a bad microbiome, just as if you were eating, I don't want to use the word carcass, but I can't think of another. Yeah, I got you. Okay, okay. so when you're eating animals, uh, you are actually ruining your microbiome. And when you're eating the sugary things, you're promoting the bacteria that are going to make you worse. And so that <clears throat> really is an important mechanism. If you do the high fiber diet, it promotes the kind of bacteria that'll make you chop up that cholesterol that you're making. So people don't quite understand, you, you eat cholesterol, it gets absorbed <clears throat> in your terminal ileum, right? Well, if you make cholesterol, it goes through your biliary tract into your GI system. It ends up in the same location, whether you're eating or making. And so that's why statins work, because they stop you from from making so much. That's why zetamibe works because it stops you from absorbing it um, and, and not eating it works because you lower the amount that's presented to your terminal ileum. So we have multiple mechanisms to try to make things better, multiple opportunities, but it all focuses on a whole food plant-based diet. All right, well, let's let's <clears throat> compare it. All right, let's say somebody's going to eat like a Slim Jim, right? Snap into a Slim Jim, oh yeah, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. versus like tofu jerky, right? Which you could still put in the ultra-processed category yep. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. 
is it fair to say though still despite what it was you were just talking about the tofu jerky would be the healthier option definitely would be <clears throat> so I'm not sure I'm familiar with Jim Jim, but I, I, I'm picturing this thing in the store. It's like a, every a 7 Eleven has it right by the beef. register. Oh, and, and like you and snap into it, and it's just nothing but beef and grease. It's, it's beef, grease, yeah. and sodium. Yeah. Right? A whole lot of sodium. Exactly. And so, <laughs> so you're getting the saturated fat and you're getting the cholesterol. Yeah. From that. Yeah. And you're giving the things that make the bacteria in your, in your GI tract really happy. When they're the bad bugs, yeah. Okay, yeah. And so, you, uh, so they would be completely different. And so, sure, a beef, uh, fake beef jerky, a vegan jerky, uh, at least it won't have that degree of saturated fat, and it definitely will not have the uh, cholesterol because it'll be zero. But there might be more sodium than you want, mm. and you have to check the oils, check the amount of uh, saturated fat that's in it, um, and I, hopefully they're not using sugar. I, it would not surprise me. I don't have the ingredients in front of me, but I mean, that's a special kind of right. evil man. <laughs> that's right. But it it's definitely would be better than the animal version. No question. Gotcha. So when a person even eats that animal version and it's just loaded with the saturated fat, does that also stimulate the body the same way you were talking about to produce extra yep. cholesterol? Absolutely. Wow. That's so, and, but unfortunately in the vegan world, that's coconut oil. It just breaks my heart because I love curry, but curry doesn't love me. Mm. My LDL will go right up. Wow. Uh, if I if I have that coconut oil. And so all you uh, restaurant tours out there for vegan people, let's find the curry that doesn't have the coconut oil. There's got to be a way oh, to do that. Man. Yeah. Curry is really good. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, it, it is. Yeah. It is kind of a guilty pleasure, man. Um, oh, boy. What is your definition of an ultra processed food? Because in my in my room right now, I have <coughs> roasted chickpeas and, you know, there is a little bit of safflower oil in there. And then beyond that, it's, you know, just the chickpea and a pinch of salt. Would you consider that ultra processed or are you talking like a wonder bread with ultra refinement and all kinds of additives as ultra processed? So, yeah, there's there are actually definitions and the, the, the Nova characterization and, you know, uh, one through four. And four would be something where you're taking out the fiber and you're uh, putting in sugar and salt and uh, the, you know refining it to a point where it's it's full of unhealthy ingredients and it melts in your mouth and feels so good, but it lines your arteries. And so um, I, I would say the most important thing that we should do with the Nova classification is make distinctions. That is, you could ultra process something and not have a high sugar to fiber ratio, not have a lot of saturated fat, not have a lot of sodium, uh, and it actually would be something healthy. Mm. And so it's, you know, with all due respect to Nova, what I'm hoping people will do is look at the ingredients, pay attention to what the FDA is putting, forcing them to put to disclose on the label, and hopefully with uh, a little bit of help from Congress, the um, uh, FDA is proposing front of package labeling. Yeah. So we don't have to flip it over and find it in small print. It'll be right in front of you. And what we're lobbying for, we meaning the American College of Cardiology, I'm actually, uh, I guess it's okay to say out loud, we're, we're um, a, uh, we have a writing group for specifically to encourage the FDA to do what's done in 44 different countries, which is red, yellow, Green. I was just going to ask you about the traffic light system and, and if that was something you would be a proponent a of. Absolutely. And uh, that hopefully that uh, expert consensus document will be out in the next few weeks. And we just want to support what the FDA is trying to do. Um, what's the pushback? Can you imagine being a manufacturer and the FDA puts a red label on yours? Mm -hmm. And so can you, what, and does it stop, make people buy more broccoli and less bacon? It does. Wow. And it improves health. But uh, the marketing and the commercial interests are going to push back really hard. It, uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a bare knuckle brawl to, to get yeah. this thing pushed through. Uh, what do we know in terms of consumer shopping habits in other countries? You said 44 yep. have implemented this. Uh, how quickly was there a change in consumer habits when they had that front of packaging mm -hmm. and the traffic light system? And, and they're all different. Um, some of them have five levels, you know, with the uh, the yellow green in between, or the yellow and the yellow or, or the orange one that's in between. Okay. And uh, but if you keep it simple, uh, it does change by uh, purchasing habits. It's almost instantaneous once it's implemented. 
Uh, and you obviously you're going to advertise it, and I'm hoping they will advertise it when they if they're able to do it here. Mm. Okay. If uh, we're yeah, we're always concerned that that you know commercial interests can change legislation and regulation, mm. and so um, you know. But and that's one of the reasons that we're putting together the expert consensus document just to be, show that a scientific organization is in support of what the FDA is trying to do. Uh, but you know, so uh, I think how much is a, a, it, the effect that it has, unfortunately, seems to correlate with the wealth of the nation. Mm. And so uh, and, and because wealth and education are tied together and the more people are uh, educated about health, they tend to make healthier choices once they know what's going on. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to do a lot of consumer education, uh, which we should be doing anyway. And people will, you know, say, oh, well, West End of Louisville is a food a desert. And I'm saying, no, it's, that's actually just misspelled. The word is dessert, not <laughs> desert. That is, uh, the stores are there to sell what people will buy. They're not in the healthcare business. Right. They're in the keep their store open business. And so uh, if we have everyone galvanized and educated to buy healthy food, whether it's by community education programs, university related uh, food uh, demonstration projects, giving people off of uh, artificial intelligence, which is a really good tool for, for diet, mm. uh, say, say what you like and what you don't like on a whole food plant-based diet. And you also put in what diseases you have, and it can design a diet for you right there in a couple minutes. That they'll and, actually enjoy. Yeah, that yeah. they'll enjoy because yeah. it's personalized to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if we do all that, then the, the uh, national chains in these grocery stores, they'll sell what we want, but if they're going to buy a bunch of produce and the, it goes to rot on the west end of Louisville and not on the east end, they're not going to focus on that. Mm. So uh, it, it is a business. So I'm hoping that uh, you know with all that. I, I, I know people don't like me saying it in academia, but if there are food deserts in this country, it's on us. Yeah, because we're not educating people well enough. I would say then that education would be the enemy of big business in a lot of cases. Well, it can switch the business. Remember. Uh, and this is this is not recent. This was in the 1970s. I hate to say that I was in medical school in the 70s, but don't I was. hate yourself. But don't I was. Hate yourself. But um, when I was in this uh, in medical school, and you're looking at the epidemiology of heart disease, which we all were, um, the United States was not number one. Finland was number one. We used to say, "Don't go to Finland. That's where the finish line is." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> a fact of the matter is, they had so much heart disease. Uh, and it was because it was an animal-based uh, uh, cholesterol-laden diet, and they went to work on it. Mm. And so it became the, the famous uh, social uh, transformation project to change things. So, I don't know what it sounds like in, in the Finnish language, but in English, it sounds pretty good. Change berry farms to dairy, uh, dairy farms to berry farms. And so getting more production of fruit and vegetables and less animal products and um, particularly they went after butter mm. and made sure that people were doing plant-based substitutes. And there was a dramatic fall, first in serum cholesterol. National serum cholesterol levels dramatically fell and the heart disease fell just like, you, know, you probably heard this stuff, maybe you have, but uh, most of the audience will not have heard this. But uh, if you looked at uh, Norway and heart disease in World War II, they were going along like every other you know, Western European country, a lot of heart disease, they're dying of heart attacks, didn't have the therapies that we do now to mm. save people. So people were dying in droves. Uh, and then the Nazi regime came in. Uh, they didn't fight. They just gave them what they wanted, which meant we are going to take your animals to feed our troops. Mm. And they were suddenly forced into a low animal product uh, era. And the heart disease plummeted. The Nazis lost. Everybody knows that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They got their animals back, got their animals back, and the cardiac event rate went right back up to where oh, wow. it had been before. Okay. So we have these, you know, large society information that'll tell us that animal products create heart disease and mortality, and going to a plant-based diet will help. So I'm hoping that we will focus on that as, with our nation, use the history of others uh, to help uh, us straighten out our toxic levels of healthcare costs in this in this country. Let me ask you this: um, If this nation grad gravitates toward you know more education specific to nu 
nutrition, um, both through communal efforts and, and certainly major changes in the industry. What do you think, how quickly would you expect that we would see the rates of heart disease plummet in this country in the same way you were just describing overseas? So it's really interesting that um, the effect on particularly inflammation and lipids is almost immediate. And so you repeat them in two weeks and they've normalized. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I would think that the uh, cardiac event rate is not going to go to zero. Mm. Um, you know, each of those interventions is probably worth a 20, 25, 30% decrease uh, in cardiovascular mortality. And, and you know, and it, it will take more than just diet. Diet is just one of the six pillars right. of, uh, of lifestyle medicine that really where each one of them can dramatically improve outcomes. Well, you know, but we, so we need to focus on all six. And so uh, where I am in Louisville, it, uh, in Kentucky, it would be great to start with the diet, get people to exercise. And the third one I would pick is substance abuse. And people need to stop smoking. I know it's a tobacco growing state, but we need to realize what that actually, the effect that that has. Uh, it, it, there is some recognition and in Kentucky, we are, as of uh, this year, we are number two in cancer deaths instead of number one. So progress is being made, but this it's not fast enough. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, let's finish up with a couple more uh, about cholesterol specifically. Um, I want to go back to the presentation again, doing everything right and still. Exercise being one of those pillars. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that you can't exactly, the phrase is, you can't outrun a Big Mac. Can exactly. you exercise off cholesterol? You, you can. It specifically improves your HDL if it's too low, uh, which can be protective. And I do spend a lot of time talking during the presentation about how we've misunderstood HDL and how high HDLs do not protect you. They actually increase uh, cardiac events. Well, uh, but exercise has such great benefits uh, for endothelial function and for losing weight, which drops your insulin levels. So your plaque accumulation uh, it's, it just drops. You could have a high insulin level and a certain level of LDL cholesterol. How much plaque is being formed by the LDL really depends on your insulin level. Mm. It is atherogenic, and meaning that it makes plaque. Therefore, um, anything that you can do that loses weight, particularly around the middle, drops your insulin level, and exercise does that so well. Good deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you know, Dr. Williams, I feel like we could talk for, for days and hours and more, um, but I know that you got to run. we got a busy conference here, but I greatly appreciate your time, and I want to thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. This has just been fantastic, my friend. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoy our conversations, and uh, let's do that. Uh, we keep talking about doing a tennis podcast. Healthy tennis. Daniel, Absolutely. let's make it happen. There you go. Just so, just you, you probably know this already, uh, but the publication last year, we might have actually talked about it, um, at a plant-based diet, uh, diet uh, at best will give you 9.6 years yeah. of extra life. Yeah. Tennis, 9.7. Get out. Yep. 9.7. From tennis. The data has been published. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you'd be the one to say it. I love it so much. Dr. Williams, Absolutely. thank you, my friend. Absolutely. Take care.